Hey, what's up guys? Chris Shane here for Chris Clark Productions. Welcome to this week's tutorial. Today we're looking at how to pop a head, whether it's a headshot or making a head explode. It's all pretty much the same thing. Now the clip that we're gonna be using is from a video release last week called Call of Duty Black Ops 3 Zombies in Real Life. And you guys have been sharing with your friends. You've been showing it a lot of love and I really appreciate it. Uh, if you haven't checked it out yet, go ahead and check it out. But uh, let's jump into this tutorial and let's uh, look at how to pop a head. So we're gonna make a new composition and we're just gonna drag the clip into our timeline and that's just gonna create a composition for us that's the same exact length, settings, and everything as of that clip. So we're not gonna be covering this first part of this uh, clip, although I will be doing a tutorial on you know how to create some realistic blood hits. But right now we're only gonna focus on this last part of the clip where there's this last zombie approaching the camera and gets shot in the head. Now I'm going to show you two different ways of doing this effect, but um, essentially the steps are sort of the same. Both ways could work and cannot work depending on what kind of shot you have, so just thought I'd give you both so you can decide for yourself. So anyways, for the first way of doing this, we're going to duplicate the layer and uh, we're just going to find a spot where uh, our subject is not completely in frame. This is as good as it's going to get for me. So I'm going to freeze frame this, this frame right here and uh, now we have just a uh, frozen image of this one frame. So I'm just going to drag that underneath. So now let's move on to cutting off the head. So what we need to do is just create a mask around the head at the point in time where he reacts to his head being blown off. So just creating a pretty rough mask around his face. And of course we don't want a floating head so I'm going to set that mask to subtract. And um, you know we're starting to get an idea here. Obviously the clean play is really messed up, doesn't align well at all. So we're going to have to fix that in just a second. And then all you need to do is animate the mask so that it follows uh, your, your character falling to the ground. So I did a pretty terrible job so I'm just readjusting real quick. But anyways, as I'm scrolling through here, uh, you're obviously seeing that there is quite a bit of an issue with the background not matching. We're gonna fix that in just a second. And that's the part of the video that sort of splits off into two different ways of doing it. But we're noticing something else. We're seeing that the hands are sort of going in front of where the head is. So we need to mask the hands as well. So very simple, just like what we did before, we're creating a mask, we're animating its path and everything works right away. The mask for the hand is set to add and the mask for the head is set to subtract. So that's, that's how that works out. But um, we're gonna do the same exact thing for the other hand, just speeding through this super fast at rotoscoping um, or the video is sped up you know could be one or the other then we're gonna feather out the mask just to make it blend a little bit better we're, we're seeing this orb which is a hole in our video and we only want this to appear when his head is being blown off so we want to go to that point in time right where that first keyframe is of that uh, mask path and we want to create a keyframe just by you know, clicking on the stopwatch for the mask expansion. And then I'm going to move back, maybe one or two frames, and then push that mask expansion all the way into the negatives as far as you can until um, you know, we see the guy's head again, until pretty much the mask disappears. So as I script through this, you can see that the mask sort of pops on and uh, that's exactly what we needed. So now we need to move on to the more complicated and possibly confusing part. I mean, it, well, it's not complex and it's not that confusing, it's just a little tricky. But you'll see why in just a second. So the first way of doing this is that we're gonna pretty much just drop the opacity of our top layer, which is just our normal footage with the mask that we created. And um, by dropping down the opacity, we're revealing the bottom layer, which is our clean plate. Now with the clean plate selected, pretty much you just want to move it around until it roughly matches with your other footage. Now you can take just the geometry in your scene as a way to reference where your clean plate needs to be placed, at what height. And again, this is sort of tricky because because like in my situation, it's not just moving laterally or up and down. This was shot on the Ronin M, so I'm also moving back. Uh, panning just a little bit. So it becomes problematic because our shot is a lot more three-dimensional than just having a camera being handheld or moving up and down. Once we've uh, found a good place for it, what we want to do is animate the position of our clean plate. So again, just keep the opacity down so you can uh, get an idea of where your clean plate needs to be 
in relation to your background. Now, of course, you can track it instead of just repositioning the clean plate every so frames, but in my case, it wasn't quite working because you know the lighting is pretty dim, but the background had a lot of noise, and my tracker was just not doing a proper job. So I decided to just go the manual route, which oftentimes can do a better job depending on, on the shot. Now I know what some of you are probably thinking, why didn't you pick a better clip? This is a tutorial, come on, get more professional here. What are you doing with your life? But the reason why I decided to stick with this clip is because this is not just a tutorial, it's also a breakdown of an effect I did from that uh, Call of Duty video. So I just wanted to show you guys every aspect of that. And I'll be breaking down some of the other shots in the future videos. And by the way, if you're seeing annotations on the bottom of the video popping up here and there, um, there are actually links to other tutorials that I've done in the past that are actually just about that one specific tool inside of After Effects. So soon we'll be looking at the 3D camera tracker in After Effects and other functions. And you're going to see annotations pop up that link you to tutorials about just that one specific part of the program. And I'm doing this and I am probably will be doing this for the future videos so that, you know, in case something is a little bit too confusing, you can take the time to watch other videos. And uh, this way, you know, everybody's at the same pace and can follow along. Now I'm just making some quick adjustments. It doesn't have to be perfect, uh, at least in this example, for a couple reasons. Number one, it's just one hole out of the whole image and it will be covered in a bunch of blood squirting up. And then the other reason is that this is such a quick shot that his head bursts and then we pan away. And that's a terrible thing to say. I know that's not an excuse for uh, lazy editing, but honestly, when it comes to visual effects, the sooner you cut away from it, the more realistic it's gonna be. The more you linger onto that shot, the more the audience has time to realize how fake it is. All right, so now let's take a look at the second way of doing this. And we're not gonna be repeating all the steps. You know, we already cut the holes. We already did all that. Um, what I'm showing you is just a second way of dealing with adding a background back into the hole that we cut in our footage. And this time we will be tracking, and I know I said just a few minutes ago that I wasn't able to track it. Well, I wasn't able to 2D track it, but I was able, with a pretty useful trick, to 3D camera track the scene. So before we do any tracking of any kind, we need to make it a little bit less confusing for After Effects to understand this scene. So what I'm gonna do is mask the clip that we're gonna track, and uh, I'm gonna mask out the subject from this clip. And the reason why I'm doing this is because all of this hand movement that he's doing and him falling to the ground can really mess with After Effects. When it comes to the program understanding distances in the space of your shot, we're gonna just pretty much get rid of the subject from the scene so that we can let the program just focus on the environment. And then another thing that we need to do in order for this to work is we need to pre-comp this clip. If we just apply the camera tracker on this clip without it being pre-composed, it's gonna ignore the masks. And it's important to click on move all attributes into the new composition. Click OK, and now we have a pre-comp. And we can just cut this. I'm um, hitting Shift-Command-D just to sort of splice it and do the same thing for where the effect ends so that we can uh, then apply the 3D camera tracker to that one portion of the clip. So it's gonna do its thing. It might take a while depending on your computer. I personally have a super fancy computer. Either that or the video is sped up, I don't know. So it's gonna solve all of that data for us and it's gonna leave us with a bunch of colorful dots in our scene. And those are all of the tracking information just pretty much laid out in 3D space. You know, when you think about what this tool actually does, it's pretty incredible. Um, okay, I'm not gonna just have a fanboy After Effects moment here. Let's, let's keep it going. Now, the only points that we're interested in are the points all the way in the back of our scene sticking to the back wall. And that is because most of what we see through the hole that we cut for the head to pop will be just that back wall. Now, we're gonna be seeing a little bit of the column, uh, which is why ideally what you wanna do is sort of recreate that geometry in 3D space. So now if I select all of these points, and I right click on them, I can say create a camera and also create a solid that is positioned exactly where those points were. Okay, so I just uh, took a few seconds to clean this up just a little bit. It was getting a little bit too messy. All right, so once again, we're gonna create sort of a clean plate. So we're duplicating our, our footage, but this time we're making it a 3D uh, layer. So what we're gonna do is copy the position from that track solid, paste it onto that layer, then scale it up and shift it to the point that it matches uh, through our hole here. So it's pretty much similar to what we did in the beginning. We're just doing the same thing, but with the 3D layer. Um, and we don't have to animate the position because as I scrub through here, 
you can see that it nicely fits our scene since it's a 3D layer in a 3D track scene. All right, I hope I didn't lose some of you guys, but we've managed to get past the boring part of this tutorial. And now it's time for the fun part, which is adding all those bloody assets and elements and uh, creating some gory goodness. I'm gonna be using Action Essentials 2. I've mentioned this a ton of times, and most of you already know what this is. But instead of doing the usual, just dragging and dropping a bunch of blood assets, I'm gonna show you ways of using assets that are not normally associated with this type of effect but now instead of just doing the usual just dragging and dropping of blood assets and just making it look like every other effect on YouTube, which I don't know about you guys, but whenever I see Action Essentials 2, I can immediately spot it and that can get pretty distracting for a viewer that knows what that is. They automatically see that it's an effect and you know they, they are taken back from it. But instead what I will be doing is showing you a couple of different assets from that same pack, Action Essentials 2, and just with a few simple tweaks, um, you can pretty much create new assets in a way. But before we move uh, any further, we need to create a new null object and uh, we need to just animate the position of that null object to sort of follow the neck of our victim here um, so that all the assets that we're gonna be adding can stick to our guy and follow him as he collapses to the ground. Now, I'm being lazy here and I'm only animating the position, but you guys should probably also animate you know, the, the rotation since the guy is uh, spinning a little bit as he falls down. So now that we've done that, we can go back to our asset and I'm gonna parent it to that null object. And then I'm gonna add an effect called tint to our, um, to our dirt explosion. And I'm gonna change the map white to, instead of white, a dark red color. And um, now you're getting the idea of what this does. Now, of course, this looks pretty silly on its own, um, but the reason why I decided to pick this specific asset over any other one is because it had some chunks that had, well, more like debris shooting up with the blast, and that helps adding some, some elements, some gory elements that could be seen as chunks of his brain, or I don't know, you can go as graphic as you want with um, how you see this. But of course, we're not just adding this one element, we're gonna be layering in quite a few elements, and you can go as detailed as you want. Then we're gonna add some directional blur, and it's, it's always good to blur out your assets, but this one in particular needs a little bit of directional blur since we have this stuff shooting up. Uh, and you know, most of these assets, the assets from Action Essentials 2, or most assets online, are shot at really high shutter speeds, a little bit slower than usual so that you can get all that crisp detail. So it's our job as compositors to crap that footage down to match with the footage that we shot. Crapping, is that a word? Make it, make the footage, make, make the elements look crappy. I don't know, it's a word now. So anyways, you know, it's important to remind yourself that everything that you shoot isn't perfectly sharp and you always need to check back whether your assets match uh, with the blurriness or sharpness level of what um, they're being placed on because that might not be a dead giveaway of effect being an effect, but it definitely adds to people understanding that it's not really in your scene. And then finally, I'm gonna show you a third type of asset that you can use from these types of libraries um, to use as blood that aren't really intentionally made to be used as blood. And that is some bouncing debris. Um, I've used this quite a bit in, in this video and that is because when I was watching gameplay footage of Call of Duty Black Ops 3, Whenever you do headshots, you really see that head and chunks just flying out. And uh, what I did is pretty much the same thing as all the other effects. I added this bouncing debris asset. I created a mask so you don't see the parts sort of laying on the ground. And, uh, and then I just added that same tint. But instead of using the directional blur, I used a radio blur. And instead of leading it to spin, I set it to zoom so that it matches with the type of movement that it has. And then of course you can add some actual blood assets into this whole gory mess. And as you noticed, I only just sort of threw in one layer out of all these categories, but you can go as detailed as you want. You can add as many layers of blood, of dirt shooting up, of dust, of puffs, of whatever, and that will add some realism and some detail to your effect. But this is just an example just to show you what you can do with different assets. And then you can add some final just blood squirts now the reason why it's good to mix and match all of these different uh, types of assets is because most of the blood assets that you get, whether it's from detonation films or action essentials, the blood assets are just these really sharp 
liquid elements that are just shooting out. Well, I don't know about shooting a real person, but when you see people getting shot in movies, whether it's because of the squibs or just the way that blood squirts out, it's not always a perfect stream of liquid shooting out. There's also those smaller particles of blood that create this sort of misty look around the blood squirt. So that's sort of the idea behind all of this. And uh, you're going to be seeing a lot more of this sort of technique explored in the upcoming tutorial where we're going to be looking at how to create realistic blood hits. And then I added some blood squirting up as the guy's falling down so that, you know, there's probably some severed veins or something there that's just squirting up this, this blood as this guy's falling down. Anyways guys, that is it for this tutorial. I hope you learned something new from this. I hope it was useful. And I hope you now look at your asset libraries in a completely different light, knowing that you can mix and match all these different assets to pretty much fit in whatever effect that you're doing just by adding uh, some effects to those assets. And we've just scratched the surface here. In the next tutorials, we're going to be looking at different effects that you can add to a bunch of different assets um, to make them look completely different, um, you know, saving you a ton of money so you don't have to buy more and more assets and you can just pretty much mix and match and um, use the same ones over and over again for all kinds of different effects. Anyways guys, if you haven't checked out the original video from where this clip is from, Call of Duty Black Ops 3 Zombies in real life, uh, please do share with your friends or share this video. It all helps and I really appreciate all the love that you guys have been showing me and all the support. I'm super thankful. But anyways, before I start to make this into a speech, I'm going to end it right here. My name is Chris Trini for Chris Court Productions and I will see you next time.